you for joining me. It is a great day to be alive. God is moving. He's shifting. And if you've been believing God for a supernatural miracle, I do believe that this is the segment that you've been praying for. So just lift your hands up and just say, Lord, I need you today. If you don't do it, I don't know who can. I've learned to trust him even when I can't trace him. And my guest on today, Apostle, oh my goodness, Luther Martin, his testimony is going to blow you away. Because when I think about him, one word comes to mind, the favor of God. Welcome, man of God. Thank you for having me. Hallelujah. It's nothing like the favor of God. That's right. It's wow. Favor, God's favor can find you mm -hmm. where money can't help you. Say that one more time. God's favor will find you where money can't help you. Now you said it like you really know that like life has you have seen God move in your life. You've seen him transform you. So let's go back in time. Have you always been this man that's <laughs> suited up right now that's ready to speak a word over God's people? Who are you for those that are watching <laughs> us? They're asking, who is this man, Tammy? <laughs> it started out in a small country town, Prentice, Mississippi. And like many people in the South, faithful in church and grew up as a church musician mm -hmm. um, playing the keyboards and made that, um, you know, I've been, I knew every aspect of what it meant to be in the church. Yeah. Yeah. But the church wasn't in me. My God. I was playing the piano and singing about a Jesus that I didn't know. Mm. And so across my teen years, when at about 13 years old, I was walking out beside the church and I heard the call of God come to me and told me to go and preach the gospel. Did you take heed or dismiss it? I says, Lord, if this is you, I says, I'm too young to do this. If it be you. I didn't know about Jeremiah, but say, if it be you, yes, sir. <laughs> prove it to me. Yeah. About three Sundays later, God sent a 13-year-old evangelist to our church to preach that Sunday morning. Did you believe me? I ran <laughs> more. <laughs> and so my teen years went, and, and Tammy, through it all, in all of the hurt and the rebellion that I had toward God, right. I think in that he never left me. Yeah. The, the grace of God, he never stopped calling. And so when I was about 21 years old or 20 years old, I went into uh, driving trucks over the road at 21 mm -hmm. and, um, and make a long short of it. Uh, one morning I was at a city in Homa, Louisiana, <laughs> unloading a load. God has a way. Mm. And it was a man <laughs> that was unloading his truck next to me. And he says, I, I look at him, I says, hello, how are you doing? He looks at me, he says, do you know Jesus? Ah. And I says, well, I grew up in church. He says, do you know Jesus? There's a major difference. Ah. Yeah. I says, well, I played the piano. I've been to all my Baptist conventions. He asked again, he says, but do you know Jesus? Yes, sir. And I began to weep. Mm -hmm. Thought I was losing my mind. Mm -hmm. I pulled away from the dock, went to close my truck doors, and I looked up. He was standing there again. And he says, young man, the Lord is calling you to him this morning. But you knew that, didn't you? I, I knew that. I knew that it was another attempt of God. And I ignored it once again, got in my truck and took off up the highway. Then I heard a voice in the cab of my truck that my says, God. this day you have chose your way. Mm -hmm. And three months later, I was a full time drug trafficker. Jesus. Three months later. But he was knocking. He was knocking. You didn't open your heart up to him. Wouldn't obey. Obedient. Disobedience mm -hmm. is the greatest danger that you can live in. Yeah. And had it not been for the grace of God. And in an instance, I went against everything that I ever believed had been raised to know. Mm. And I opened nightclubs. Why? Yeah. Why? Why did you why do you believe looking back that transition happened? Because you were in the church. You were a musician. Mm -hmm. You would hear the word of God. Of course, I'm sure you're hearing it, but it wasn't in you at that time. Mm -hmm. Would that be correct? Well, mm -hmm. I learned the answer to that question. After I was sitting in the county jail mm -hmm. Facing life with no parole plus 120 years. Somebody that's watching right now can't believe that. Let's go back. We got to build this up for them. You went from truck driving to being a major, say that what, drug. Trafficker, drug trafficker. I trafficked drugs King out of thing. California, out of New York, 
all across the country. I was a truck driver. I knew how to travel. Yeah. And so, uh, and, and just went into it full time. Um, and it all came to an end hmm. the morning. And sometimes, Tammy, you can think that you're at the top of the game yes, sir. when you're one step away from death. Yeah. Because I'm sitting there in a Hunger Hunter restaurant in Oakland, California on March the 8th, 1994. Jesus. Thinking about suicide. Mm-hmm. And it was a, I believe now, a woman of God was a waitress that kept encouraging me. Well, just a few days later, I was arrested. And I knew then that I had become bound Mm -hmm. that I could be free. I have to ask this question Mm -hmm. because there's so much that your life entails. And I don't want anyone that's watching us right now Mm -hmm. to miss what God is saying. Mm -hmm. You were, I'm going to say, kingpin of the drug. Mm -hmm. But you said something. Even having the drugs and the money you were contemplating suicide. So there was a brokenness. You weren't happy even with that life. You can find yourself as a man with a hundred suits in a closet and can't dress up. Jesus. Mm-hmm. 50 pairs of shoes and can't walk right. Yeah. I used to say a bins and a jag in the driveway, but you're never going anywhere. Mm-hmm. $20,000 bed and you can't get any sleep at night because <laughs> you're running to the window. Because I found out that money can never buy you peace. Amen. Happiness is a passing emotion. Jesus. And it's nothing like the peace of God. It's nothing like the peace of God. And one thing that I've learned, when God calls you, he's not going to allow you to rest. That's right. Until you do what he has instructed you to do. All he wanted was your yes. Yes, that's that's, that's exactly right. It's always a knowing. Mm Mm-hmm. That no matter what venture you you take on, that it's a knowing mm-hmm. that God has got something for you to do. Yeah. And that's where I found myself when I, after I'd been arrested and I was standing at those bars. And one night an old frail man come by and he says, uh, he hollered, I never will forget his voice. He said, Chapel go. <laughs> <laughs> we walked to the bars. And he began to share the gospel message. Mm -hmm. I had spent my life in church, (laughs) but I had never heard the gospel message. And at that point, you were up against the wall, your back. So you were ready to receive it. I'm sure you were desperate by this name. Time I had heard about Meshach, Meshach and the Bendigo. <laughs> I heard about Daniels and the lion's den and how David slew, slew the giant. Yeah. I could rehearse whole messages, but I was yet to experience the one message, mm-hmm. the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ The blood that would wash away every sin you've ever committed. My God. Never heard it. In all that time, going to church. In all those years, I had heard polished three-point messages, a good hoop. Jesus. And another song. Mm -hmm. I had never heard the gospel. And with that being said, in today's time, do you believe that evangelism is vital right now in the time that we're in to share, you know, who Jesus is, how you can be saved and how he can heal, deliver and set you free. The place that we are in the midst of a pandemic, it has proven itself that it is the only answer. Yes. You cannot exit a crisis at the same level you came into it. And that is one point now that is needed. The simple gospel message. Mm-hmm. We search for deep. I've been preaching on for many years. Sometimes we search for good, rich messages <laughs> that people will enjoy. Yeah, To tickle their ear. To tickle their ear. Mm-hmm. To roll their emotion over. Yeah. But what about a challenge that would change their life? Yeah. What, what, what about the time that when you preach a message and and nobody, you know, tell me when I, if I go to a church and preach and everybody pat me on the back and say, man, you sure preached. I need to go get in my car and weep. Something is I, missing. I have failed. Right. 
I, I, I fell because I pulled people to myself mm -hmm. and I didn't push them to Jesus. My God. It's a great difference. And the word will most definitely, it will correct you, rebuke you, love on you at the same time. <laughs> Amen. Most definitely it will. Amen. And, and I've learned in the growing process that when the word is being taught, you shouldn't be saying, oh, I need to make sure sister so-and-so listen to that. Take inventory mm -hmm. within yourself. Amen. So Amen. for someone that's watching right now, they may not understand that statement that you just made where you said, I should just go in my car and weep mm -hmm. because it's like I missed the mark. Lives should be changed and they, there should be something that they think about. How can I get to know this man named Jesus? The gospel and the ministry should not be a mark of prestigiousness. Mm -hmm. The ministry is a life saving rope. Wow. That if we do not preach the truth of the gospel mm -hmm. and even the repentance of man to Jesus and woman to Jesus, we are leaving and exiting this world with blood on our hands because yeah. we fail to throw a drowning man the rope. Now, when you say we, Define that because there are people who will say, I'm not called a minister. That's not my calling. But I believe every day is a new day. As my mom said, it's a Jabez appointment no. to share the yeah. goodness of Jesus Christ. You don't have to have a title right. to That's just right. share your testimony of who Jesus is. See, and the, the mistake that is made, unfortunately, mm -hmm. and, what, and what we got to realize that everybody may not be called to stand behind a pulpit and preach mm -hmm. the gospel, but we all are called to ministry. Yes, sir. Because we all have been given, if we know Jesus, we've been given the word of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. And we have a responsibility. Our responsibility is greater yeah. than to visit in on Sunday mornings and yeah. sit in on Wednesday night. Yeah. We have somebody next to us, and Charles Finney once said in one of his old books that that was a classic. He said that what kind of fireman would lay up at night and allow his town to burn down? Jesus, that's deep. And in, and he went on to say, what kind of Christian would allow his town to sink into hell? My God. So we we have a challenge. Yeah. That there's a people, we have the word of reconciliation. Right. We have the word of hope. Mm -hmm. We have the responsibility and obligation to share. So with that being said, is it important to get out of the four walls and go into all the work in the streets, the highways, the byways, by any means necessary? Absolutely. We There have been many preachers, uh, a few preachers who have tried mm -hmm. to get people out of the four walls. But look like it has taken Corona to do it. <laughs> My God, the, the, the everything is shifted. It's different. The church, the, norm. Is, the church is not closed. Yeah, they're just leaving the walls. Yeah, and now we're we're uh, able to do parking lot revivals. Yeah, like we have coming up very soon here in this area. Mm -hmm. People, you know, we used to have people sitting in church with an attitude and frown up. Yes, and it, sir. The preacher says something they didn't like. They would quit speaking and, and, and do all kind of stuff. Now it's people sitting in the car blowing the horn to say amen. Yes, sir. And uh, and got to worship on their heart. Yes, sir. <laughs> because we're in the day and time where some things that used to bother you, you release it. You let it go. It, yeah. it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. The unforgiveness, the bitterness, the hatred, things that 20, 30 years that you harbored in your heart. Let it mm -hmm. go because people are dying it's like a domino effect. So it's the time to get it right. Would you agree? It, it is. It's ab absolutely is. And and see, the reality is that we need to take inventory now. We need to journal. What has this season taught us? Yes, sir. What I'm seeing, you know, at the, at the beginning of the year was many that prophesied this is a year of perfect vision 2020. You're going to see some things you've never seen before. Right? They were right. It's a declaration of freedom, revival and transformation over our community. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have received your ability, efficiency, and might because the Holy Spirit has come upon us and we are your witnesses in America and to the ends, the very bounds of the earth. Holy Spirit, we ask you to visit our cities and open the eyes of the people that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness and release from their sins and be purified by faith. 
You have told us to declare your works, so we say boldly that the prince of the power of the air, the God of this world who blinds the unbelievers' minds that they should not discern the truth, is a defeated foe. We declare on the authority of your word that you have disarmed the powers and authorities. You made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Thank you, Father, for the spreading of the gospel. Thank you, Father, for the guardian angels assigned to America who war for us in the heavenlies. In the name of Jesus, we stand victorious over the principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places over America. By the blessing of the influence of the upright and God's favor because of them, the cities of America are blessed. <laughs> they were on point. We see, we've seen some things. I've never mm-hmm. seen doctors on top of a hospital crying out to God and Praying. nurses in the emergency mm-hmm. room on their knees. Yes. So what what has this taught us? What what are we learning? I've learned that life is fragile. Yeah. And that there are some things that's beyond the means of man. Yes, sir. And God is still holy. Yeah. And he's still waiting. Yes. With an outstretched arm. And I love how you said that because I can hear the Holy Spirit say, I'm teaching my people spirit over the mind uh-huh. yeah, because yeah. we see things naturally. Mm-hmm. I want to control it. I want to manipulate it. And here we are at a place where all we can do is say, Lord, I trust you. I that trust will you. be done. Will if you be don't done. do it, it can't be done. Uh-huh. And I read this article on CBN of how it was a physician who mm-hmm. had tried everything medically to uh, serve this this pastor who had COVID-19. Mm. And you know, the one thing that he did, Listen. he prayed and the men came out of a uh-huh. home. Man. I read that right before I came in today <laughs> and I said, my God, Man. I said, that should be the first thing that we do instead of our last resort. So what are your feelings and thoughts on how the power of prayer can transform <clears throat> our lives? See, um, and some may disagree, but I don't believe that God responds to our pain. No, oh, come on. Or, into, or even into what we're going through. God responds to faith. Yes, sir. And when that doctor took faith on, mm-hmm. then faith and expectation would bring manifestation. Yes, sir. This is what happened that night that I got saved at the bars. And a few days later, even though the attorney general was on the television saying that I'm going to be sure that Luther Martin never sees the light of day again. Mm-hmm. I heard God say that in seven years, you will be free to go. Jesus. The same voice that I heard coming to the gospel. Jesus. In seven years, you'll be free to go. So you had someone who had it out for you. I'm, I want to break this down because mm-hmm. your testimony is so powerful, but it's spiritual. Mm-hmm. And I want someone that's watching me on today to be able to understand that God has the power and authority to overturn anything that the enemy has set for you. He'll work it for your good. It's called the favor of God. I'm sure when he said that over the airwaves, he meant that deep down inside. Uh-huh. I'm going to make sure that he never sees the light of day. But God, but God, I'm going to make sure he never sees the light of day again. God says seven years. And I've learned something that God don't clear necessarily the guilty. Jesus. But he will have mercy over judgment. My God. And that is even the most beautiful picture of Calvary. Mm -hmm. Where sin and mercy have a head on collision. My God. And mercy wins. And grace abounds. Yes, sir. And we live. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In spite of us. In spite us. of. Amen. That, spite that's amazing. Of. Amen. And and so and that's and that was the whole thing to him across the years. That's all that I had to hold on to. Mm-hmm. When friends walked away, when people didn't want to answer their phone anymore, when all the money was gone, all the lawyers was gone. The only hope that I had was the word was what Jesus has spoke to me in that cell block 31 in Forest County Jail in Hattiesburg, Mississippi that Jesus. night, that in seven years, you'll be free to go. My God. And I tell you, I trusted him. Mm-hmm. Did I it was, humble you? Uh, was it a place of total surrenderance? Um, I'm reminded of Hannah, you know, she wanted a child that she cried out to God so much that they actually thought that she was drunk. But when your back is against the wall and you said some God responds to faith, 
Did Amen. you make a vow to him? Like, hey, and say, Lord, oh. if, because most of the time we'll make a vow, and then when it happens, some people go the other way. But did you make a vow to him in those times when you were behind those bars? My point, yes, my point of humility came one night I laid in my cell. And this is after I had gone back to church, in jail, going to church. Jesus, he you knows know. how to get you, doesn't he? Yeah, but now, okay, I'm, I'm just going, I'm just going to church. Mm. I'm just doing what I knew to do. Yes, sir. Going through the motions. Going through the motions. Mm -hmm. Routinely. And see what every man and woman of God and every woman, what we've got to do is we've got to come to a place that intimacy is developed with yes, God. Sir. And that God is more real than this couch and this chair that mm -hmm. we're sitting on. And so I came to one of those nights, well, one night in the cell, I laid there and I cried and I wept all night long. And I was no longer weeping because of all that I had gotten caught and all of the sadness that I had going. But I realized that I had sinned against God. My God. That God had always been merciful to me, that God had always been willing to bless me. But I rejected God mm -hmm. for what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I found and I became sorry of my sin. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm telling you here to I'm here today to attest that godly sorrow is the words that work at repentance. Yes. People struggle about I'm in this struggle and I'm in that struggle. And I can understand that the struggle is real. But my God, your joy has got to outweigh your struggle. Yes, sir. Your joy has got to yes, outdo sir. your temptation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know? yes, sir. And, and so and those, God. those are the things that that we found. And, and, and I learned patience. I learned to wait in faith. And so that morning came, the eighth month, the eighth day, mm. unexpectedly. A new day. A new day. Mm. Unexpectedly. Suddenly. Suddenly. I had come out of prayer that morning and I was sitting on the prison line, more, one of the prison line, more, and I looked up and seen a guard coming my way. My God. And he says, are you Luther Martin? I said, yes, sir. And he says, come go with me. He says, are you going home? I got back to the prison and found out that a federal judge had released me that morning. What was that moment like for you, knowing that you were free and in the word that God had promised? It was a force from right here that lifted my elbows. My God. And all I could do, it says, God, I worship you. Yeah. I thank you and I praise you. And as long as the breath stays in my body. There it is. I will preach the gospel. There it is. Since that time, I've been on three continents preaching the gospel. Africa I, being one, am I correct? I, I've been to Africa twice My this God. year in 2020 before the shutdown. Jesus. Twice. Yes. Uh, I'm part of a of an awesome ministry called More mm -hmm. down in Jackson, Mississippi. We have a beautiful 65 acre campus. My God. Where people can come out of prison and they have nowhere to go. Where people can come by scholarship. And and our pillars and our is, is ministry, opportunity, respect, and excellence. Jesus. That they can come and they can set that even through a school of evangelism and, and and they can go on and go to work or go on and go into the ministry. And that's needed because most of the times when you come out of prison, it becomes a cycle. That's right. But it, now they have a refuge. That can right. teach yeah. and empower them and prepare them. To kill the recidivism rate. Yes. To, to put purpose, to restore some things that was missing in the beginning. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and to put people on the right trail. And so we're so, we're, we're so thankful Amen. to be a part of it because of where God, and you know, God will take you through some things. Oh, and, and that's, that's <laughs> my next question to you. Looking back, do you now understand the process? While you were behind the bars, God had a plan. Uh, Joseph, he had a plan, <laughs> you know, while you were in that pit. And so now you're in a place helping other prisoners to be transformed. Isn't that amazing? You, you know, the thing that is the thing that has has blown my mind. A highway patrolman asked me one time on the side of the highway. He looked at my record. He said, boy, and I told him, gave him my testimony. He says, but your past always follow you, don't it? Hmm. I said, sir. I says, God's glory on my future my God. is so bright that it darkens my horrible past. Yes. That's the thing that speaks yeah. to me that, that reverberate from Cabra's cross. 
that although your sins <laughs> be black, Jesus, <laughs> calm, Jesus. and I make you white as snow. Yes, as if nothing ever happened. Clean you up. That's what Abraham, our father, found in the Lord. Mm -hmm. He found a way to be before God as though he never sinned. Yeah. That's what we find in the blood of Jesus. Yeah. So I can't allow my past to dictate my future. Mm -hmm. I can't let my past Amen. stop me. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts yes, that sir. I think toward you, yes, said the sir. Lord. I'm, I'm telling you, my, my, I'm just overjoyed because I believe that somebody's life is going to be changed today. I believe that this is your day of liberty, that you've listened to this broadcast and the man of God's testimony and a mother is believing her son to be released, that you're going to get that word of confirmation. You're going to receive that phone call. You're going to receive that letter. You're going to receive that text message and you're just going to say, God, I trust you. Sometimes God just want a yes before he does it for you. Amen. Somebody just needs to say, yes, Lord. He's been knocking. He's been giving you dreams, visions. He's been even sending people that you don't like to speak a word to you, testing your heart, and you're still not listening. Why don't you just surrender and just say yes? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard sometimes, but it's simple. If you're, if you're trusting me, and, and, and I, I remember once that I needed a, a thing done in court. I had mm -hmm. no lawyer. No lawyer. No lawyer. I had no lawyer. No money to buy Couldn't one. Couldn't afford one. Couldn't afford one. But Luke 18 chapter told the story of a, of a woman that kept going to a judge. Yes, sir. And verse 8 says, shall not God avenge his own elect? Yes. I fasted and prayed for five days asking God to avenge me. My God. Guess what happened? That's ne powerful. Next weekend, I get a letter the next week from the courts. It was done. The next weekend, a volunteer comes to the prison to let me know that a man walked into his church on a Sunday morning. My God. Gave him a letter with information on it concerning me, and he got it through the proper channels to the judge and got the verdict done. Isn't that amazing? God knows how to strategically orchestrate to get it done and work in your favor. You're dispatching angelic Angel. attorneys from heaven. <laughs> I hear the song, he'll be a lawyer in a court. Hallelujah. That's amazing. Amen. That is amazing. You know, you are such a phenomenal man, um, a, a powerful testimony. But what do you feel right now in this moment that someone that's listening needs to hear? If you would just speak life into their spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Don't, broken. don't you dare give up. Amen. Jesus shed his blood yes. at Calvary's cross, friend, to give you hope. Yes, Lord. I don't care what you're going through. I see an opioid addiction that's watching at the time of this broadcast. Mm. And I want you to know that Jesus has called you to be more than your decisions has made you. And because of who he is, friend, if you would give your life up now and say yes and believe in the finished work of mm. Calvary's cross, God is going to take you on an amazing journey. Write it down. Try it and see, don't it be so in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. And it's just amazing how the Holy Spirit just speaks Amen. the right moment. And I know that there's going to be a powerful testimony that somebody that's watching right now, whether live stream or here on, on Christian television network, that they're going to say, that's me. Just receive it. Just Amen. receive it on today. Day.